Okay, live, I'm gonna do a quick chat because it is a topic that I wanted to address and I figure I'll just talk about it now and then probably post it later. So you may, and if you're on the Instagram, you've probably seen the ads that I have for my courses. And in one of the ads, I talk about relaxing in the handstand. Now, some interesting comments and as things go, usually the comments and the criticisms are coming from people with a private account or not much body of work so it, it doesn't matter but this this whole relaxation thing tends to uh, get people's nuts twisted for lack of better wording so let me just clarify what's happening with that relax in your handstand ad that you're seeing first of all it's an ad the course is like four hours and there's a lot more detail in it and what are ads meant to do they're meant to catch your attention right so by by providing a potentially controversial topic that may get people's nuts twisted it's actually enabling the algorithm but i didn't make the ad so don't blame me for that but let me address what i'm trying to get after with this idea of oh relaxing your handstand because i get messages and comments saying oh this is wrong you can't teach people to relax the video that you see where I'm showing that you can relax, that's all that I'm doing. It's a demonstration, right? What I'm trying to show, and again, this is judgment of a four-hour course based on a one-minute video, but basically what's happening is that I I don't teach people one way. I don't have any kind of dogma in my teaching. I think it's important to find what works for you based on your goals, right? Uh, somebody who randomly does handstands for fun is going to have different goals than a competitive gymnast. But the point is to explore, right? I'm trying to teach people different ways to explore their own techniques so they can figure out what works. In order to explore, we can't discount, we can't say this is what you have to do and never do this. You have to to look both ways. You have to understand both extremes because in a lot of stages of life, the truth is not at one of the extremes, it's somewhere in the middle. So by understanding both, by experiencing both sides, you can get a better understanding of the bigger picture. So body tension in a handstand can be a spectrum. It can go from fully 100% tense to fully 100% relaxed. The way that most people teach is based on the gymnastics methodology, which is more along the lines of full tension all the time. Now, I have explained this in other videos. Uh, gymnastics is taught to kids who are naturally loose and floppy. The nature of gymnastics is dynamic, so the body tension in a gymnastics handstand is something that's required to be able to transmit force in the skills that they do, which is very different than a static handstand where the force is a constant of your body weight, right? So on the other side of the spectrum is being completely loose, completely relaxed, which isn't necessarily safe either. Again, people watch this video and they think, oh, he's teaching people to do that. I'm not teaching people to do that. I'm showing you that it's a possibility that most of the tension is actually going to be in your shoulders. Right? That's what holds you up. So if you were to keep the shoulder tension and completely relax your whole body, you could still hold yourself up. Now, in order to do that, it's a demonstration. It does take a lot of control. And it's not the way that I recommend to do a handstand. I think, as I said, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Like, think about if I'm just standing vertically. I'm not bracing my abs 100%, but I'm not letting them go completely either. So the point of all of it is that this video that shows you the handstand relaxation, it's a demonstration to show you that it's possible to completely relax in a handstand. That doesn't mean that's necessarily the technique that you want to do. And realistically, it's probably not the safest technique, but full bracing, full body tension, I don't think is the best technique for most people either because it's a waste of energy. It's sending your concentration in different places and that actually can prevent you from being relaxed enough to react to the balance because you can't be super tense if you want to have really good balancing corrections. So just my thoughts, right? I just wanted to clarify that because 
Yeah, I get a lot of comments from uh, from people who think they know something. And keep in mind, I never, I don't think that I know anything. I will never tell people that I know something or that I'm any kind of authority. But I have a little bit of experience, and all I'm trying to do is teach based on my experience and my observation. And likewise, I'm never going to discount and say, "No, you're wrong." I usually say explain to me the context and you're probably right within this context but there could be many different contexts and it's all about exploring and finding the technique that works for you personally for me i prefer to keep my body pretty relaxed in the handstand it's not a hundred percent relaxed i'm still keeping my form but i'm trying to do minimal effort to hold myself up and within that minimalism i'm trying to kind of cut the fat so to speak i'm trying to figure out what I don't need in my handstand to still be able to maintain the form and hold myself up. And I, I teach it different ways to different people. Like uh, one example I can give is if I'm teaching the same handstand to maybe crossfitters versus dancers. Uh, dancers are naturally trained to be very loose, especially in the upper body. So if I'm teaching a handstand workshop at a dance studio to dancers, I'm probably going to include drills that promote stiffness of the body because it's maybe a factor that they don't have right it's a factor that they're not really training likewise if i'm training a bunch of weightlifters i might do the opposite they might be already too stiff and i might be training drills to help relax their body and it's the same skill it's just a different perspective to approach that same skill so ultimately what it comes down to is no you probably don't want to completely relax in your handstand Uh, you have to find out how relaxed can you still be and hold it um, I don't think full tension is the answer, unless you're training to be a competitive gymnast. I don't think full relaxation is the answer, but I think it's worth exploring both avenues to build that control, to build that versatility, and again, to see the bigger picture. So if you needed to, you could switch, right? That, that's also something that comes down to, if I'm training gymnastic skills, I know how to perform a tense handstand that's safe uh, for those skills, and the technique will help do the gymnastic skills. Likewise, if I'm in a capoeira hoda, I know how to relax my body in a handstand to account for potentially being kicked while I'm there and still have that re uh, reaction and reflex reflexivity to, uh, to do that. So, yeah. I don't know if there's any questions or anything like that. This is just uh, some thoughts because I, I see the comments and it's funny, right? People... People get their nuts twisted over this, and it, it's nothing is universal. It's not this universal constant. And I don't believe in this universal constant where you have to flex your abs all the time or your back is going to go out. Your spine is meant to move. It's meant to take load in different positions, but you have to understand it and you have to understand your own body and when you need to provide tension and when you need to relax and to have that kind of control. And, uh, You don't get that kind of control and versatility by only working one side. You don't get it by only doing one thing. You have to explore the different avenues. And if you do something that's new, it's going to feel awkward. There's going to be resistance. That doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means it's different. Um, but then also there's the mental part of it where if you are used to doing something a certain way and then you hear people saying oh this other way is wrong but you haven't experienced it but you've listened to people say it already you're going into it with an apprehensive idea of oh i might get hurt doing this but um i don't want to ramble too much because i do have a few things to do today but i'll take like two more minutes for questions but otherwise thanks for listening this has been my time